As far-right rebels continue their uprising against McCarthy, the House is paralyzed. On Wednesday, hard-right Republicans continued their rebellion against Speaker Kevin McCarthy into a second day, maintaining control of the House chamber in a blatant show of strength that made it unclear whether McCarthy could continue to lead his small and fractured party. Mr. McCarthy who infuriated hard-right lawmakers by reaching a compromise with President Biden to suspend the debt limit, has not yet been the target of a bid to have him removed from office. However, the revolt has prevented him from having a majority to govern, leaving him, at least temporarily, as speaker in name only. Rep. Matt Gates, a Republican from Florida and the leader of the uprising, tweeted on Wednesday that House leadership couldn't hold the line. We'll take the floor now. Leaders informed Republican legislators on Wednesday evening that they were canceling votes for the rest of the week after having to postpone votes for the second day in a row as they wrangled privately with members of the House Freedom Caucus to persuade them to surrender. In a stunning display of intra-party hostility, a dozen rebels shut down the parliament on Tuesday by voting against a procedural motion that would have allowed legislation to advance. The rebellion must end before activity can restart. It highlighted the serious repercussions Mr. McCarthy faces as a result of his obstinate efforts to force through a debt ceiling deal with the White House that only included a small portion of the expenditure cuts Republicans had wanted. Within Mr. McCarthy's own leadership team, the incident has rekindled divides, and the Speaker implied that his number two was partially to blame for the turmoil and it served as a stark reminder of the difficulty Mr. McCarthy will confront in keeping his conference together in order to pass important spending bills this year, which are necessary to prevent the government shutdown this fall and painful overall spending cutbacks in early 2025. The paralysis that has gripped the House this week, an exceedingly rare instance of a faction of the majority holding its own party hostage, recalled Mr. McCarthy's week-long, 15-round slog to win his post which required him to win over many of the same hard-right lawmakers instigating the current drama. On Wednesday night, Mr. McCarthy conceded that there was a little chaos going on, though he insisted that he would get the party agenda back on track. We've been through this before, you know we're in a small majority, Mr. McCarthy told reporters earlier in the day. I don't take this job because it's easy. We'll work through this, and we'll even be stronger. But he also appeared to blame the impasse at least in part on Rep. Steve Scalise of Louisiana, the majority leader, saying that he had caused a misunderstanding that paved the way for the spontaneous hijacking of the House floor on Tuesday. The majority leader runs the floor, Mr. McCarthy said. The temper tantrum from the right had little immediate impact other than to deprive Republicans of the chance to pass a messaging bill that was all but certain to die in the Senate. The legislation that the rebels blocked is aimed at guarding against government restrictions on gas stoves and other federal regulations. But ultra-conservative Republicans said much more was at stake, arguing that Mr. McCarthy had betrayed promises he made to them during his fight for the speakership and now had to be forced into honoring them. There was an agreement in January and it was violated in the debt ceiling bill, said Rep. Ken Buck, Republican of Colorado. He said the conversations with Mr. McCarthy on Wednesday were to discuss how to restore some of that agreement. In the meantime, some rank-and-file Republicans lamented the spectacle, political incontinence, Rep. Steve Womack of Arkansas called it, and predicted a major backlash against their party in 2024 if they did not get themselves in order soon. We are wetting ourselves and we can't do anything about it, Mr. Womack said. This is insane. This is not the way a governing majority is expected to behave, and frankly I think there'll be a political cost to it. In some sense, the drama was a reset to how House Republicans have long functioned, with a speaker constantly threatened by a small group of hard-right bomb-throwers who make his job impossible unless he bows to their demands. Former Speaker John A. Boehner of Ohio resigned from Congress in 2015 under pressure from House conservatives who repeatedly threatened to move to topple him. But Mr. McCarthy has been set on not replicating those mistakes, trying to defang his biggest detractors by rewarding them with committee chairmanships and powerful positions on the Rules Committee. 
That approach appeared to have worked, until Mr. McCarthy, knowing that the right wing would not provide the votes to pass a debt limit bill, worked with Democrats to push through the legislation just days before a default. We're back to the normal state of affairs where the Speaker has to worry about this group, and that's how it's been for a decade, said Brendan Buck, who was a top advisor to Speaker Paul D. Ryan of Wisconsin and Mr. Boehner. These guys want to be relevant more than anything else. They find a way to reassert themselves into the conversation. Former speakers have had to suffer the embarrassment of pulling bills from the floor because they did not have the votes to pass their legislation. But it had been almost 21 years since a procedural measure had been defeated on the House floor, as occurred on Tuesday. Mr. McCarthy had privately leaned on Republicans not to resort to such a move. In the weekly party conference meeting on Tuesday morning, he said lawmakers were always free to vote against a bill they did not like, but should never take actions that turn the floor over to the minority, such as voting against a procedural motion, as many of them had done in a bid to block the debt ceiling bill from being considered, according to two people familiar with the meeting. Hours later, about a dozen Republicans did just that, voting with Democrats against allowing the regulatory bills to come up. Rep. Tom Emmer of Minnesota, the majority whip, called the episode a minor setback after several months of a well-functioning House, and blamed it on an accumulation of frustration that's been building since January. Don't expect that it's always going to be like this, he said. Every team will encounter adversity at some point. That's literally what we're going through. It was not clear exactly what the members of the Freedom Caucus were demanding in exchange for surrendering control of the floor. They don't know what to ask for, Mr. McCarthy said on Wednesday night. There's numerous different things they're frustrated about. And Mr. Gates made it clear that demands were secondary to forcing Mr. McCarthy to make a defining decision, whether he wanted to pass bipartisan bills with Democrats or have the support of the far right. We're going to force him into a monogamous relationship with one or the other," he said in an interview on War Room, the podcast hosted by Stephen K. Bannon. What we're not going to do is hang out with him for five months and then watch him go jump in the back seat with Hakeem Jeffries. GOP conservatives shudder House to protest McCarthy-Biden debt deal, setting up next budget brawl.